Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's good. Amen. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Philippians. If you have your Bibles, turn where chapter 4. Um, and I'm going to ask you a hard question right now, okay? Think about this now. Does anybody here th ever think? <laughs> what do you mean think? Right? Anybody ever have a thought? Oh yeah, right? Everybody has thoughts all the time, right? All kinds of thoughts. Right? What, what brings on a lot of the thoughts? So, is it what you see sometimes? Or what you hear? Yeah, if you're sitting, I could say uh, banana pudding. That'll bring on a thought, won't it? Oh, I ate some of that the other day. Yeah, it's good stuff. Amen. Right? See? See what I mean? Uh, you know, pizza. You know, I, you know, puts thoughts. If you're watching TV or something, it may put thoughts, give you a thought of something, right? Um, so, unless... We're brain dead or something. <laughs> Hopefully none of us are. We all have thoughts in our head. Um, here in Philippians, he tells you what to think on. If you, I mean, this is something to strive for. Okay? Verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Well, that's a good way to think, eh? About true things. Chapter 4, verse 8. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. That's a good one there too, right? Keeps your mind. Feels good, doesn't it? Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Isn't it good to think about lovely things? I mean, every one of us thinks about unlovely things sometimes. <laughs> things are, hits our mind, they're wicked, and they shouldn't be there. Those are not, we don't like those thoughts. Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what's he say? Think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Do. And the God of peace shall be with you. What a wonderful recipe of thought. <laughs> now, everyone, we don't, we don't, I mean, this is something to shoot for it. Because our thoughts, we're in the world. We see things of the world. We hear things of the world. And, you know, and everything we hear, just like this abortion stuff and, Amen. It just troubles our mind because that stuff's not pure. It's not holy. It's wicked. That's all it is. Amen. It, it, it's bad stuff. So, um, so what do you do with these thoughts? Okay, let, let, I'm gonna read you just how Second Corinthians ten five says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I mean, what, what's that look like, though, when your thoughts are running wild? And you know, man, I don't want to go down this road. <laughs> you know, somebody cuts you off, and you start plotting how to terrorize them, <laughs> right? Anybody been there? I'm the only one who does that. How I can get them, yeah, you know. And I, oh, wait a minute, I can't go down this road. <laughs> There's no reason to go down this road, right? So you give though that train of thought that you're going down, Lord, I, I want to give this captive into you, <laughs> right? You give that thought. It works. I, I, I got I to think of something else. What do I need to shift my thoughts to? Well, I just read to you. Those things were true. Those things are lovely. Those things are holy. This person needs the Lord probably. 
or they wouldn't be driving like that. Amen. No, I don't know. Amen. So, see, you shift them to that. Now, it's just one, one, one incident, so, okay? So, that, that happens, that comes more with maturity, doesn't it? I mean, is a young Christian going to really understand this? No, no, they ain't going to understand this concept. Um, it takes practice. It takes learning. And that's what Sue was talking about a while ago. Paul wrote, I have learned to be content in all to things. He had to learn it, see. And you have to learn this also. And you got to realize this is a road that your mind, your thought pattern doesn't need to go down. And I got to, that stop sign has to be there. And Jesus is the stop sign. All right? Are you with me so far? Okay. Um, so, you and I, um, we can only have I'll get ahead of myself. I'm going to go to Isaiah. How many knows that God has thoughts also? Okay? The world has thoughts. Right? And uh, Ronald Reagan had a good quote. He says, The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they are ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't true. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, it, it's not that they're ignorant. It's just they know so much that's not true. The world's thoughts are not God's thoughts. The Bible tells us that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And his ways are higher than our ways. So, yes, God thinks for my thoughts are not your thoughts. That's what he says in Isaiah 55 and 8. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Wouldn't it be lovely if everybody went after the thoughts of God in the world? We wouldn't have to have locks on the door. Our children could go to school and not have to worry about being teach ungodly and wicked things. Amen. We wouldn't have to worry about the killing and the murdering. And then I wonder, you know, what kind of thoughts went through like Jonah's mind when God told him to go to Nineveh and preach, but then he got up and ran the other way. See, I, I don't know what thoughts went through his mind. But I wonder, what was he thinking about that he could think he could run from God? I mean, where, do, where does, how does a person get to that place? What was Judas thinking when he went to the priest and said that he would betray Jesus for the 30 pieces, 30, right? Pieces of silver. What was going through his mind? He was thinking that his thinking was driving him. He had some kind of thought that this would be all right somehow. Some kind of thought. And that's what people do. They got, their, their thinking is all wrong. It's all messed up. And these people that get to a place and they take their own life, their thinking is all messed up. See, where do, where do they get to this place? How can they get to this place where their thinking's so wrong? Because it's contrary to God's word. How can people get to the place where they think that marriage outside of the plan of God is right? Or living together? Or laying around drunk all your life? How, how can they, where do they get that mind thought, thought of mind? And I guess the only way you can understand it is go there. And I don't, I don't want to go there. And I wonder about brothers and sisters that's been here in the church and now they're out there living a wicked and ungodly life. And they seemingly, I've seen them praising God. 
I, I've seen them preaching. I've seen the anointing on them. What happened? How's their thoughts driven them so far away from God? How's the thoughts got them so far? Something has, some kind of wrong thinking has got them in a place. Hey Amen, I don't understand it. I really don't. But I know a man's thoughts or a woman's thoughts can drive them far away the wrong way. If we let it. That's why, that's why he warns us to bring these thoughts captive into the obedience of Jesus Christ. What do we find obedience in Jesus Christ? It's in his word. It's in his word. See, my thinking can't line up with what Robert Kidd learned when he's grown up. My thinking has to line up with what the word of God says. Say, don't you have your own mind? Yeah, I got my own mind. But my own mind has come to the place to my thinking who that believes that every word, amen, from Genesis to Revelation is true. That's my thinking. That it, it, it just believes it. Now, I mean, I've come to a place where I believe the word is true. And nobody, I don't care who it is, they can pass laws of all kinds, is going to convince me any different. That the word of God is not true. Now I know that the Bible says if the Lord tarries, no flesh will be saved. So I ain't, I'm not so puffed up in myself to think that I can't fall because I know I can. But by the grace of God, my thinking is this now. Thank God. I hope it continues to be that way. And I hope everybody here continues to be that way. That your thinking lines up with the God, the biblical way, not the worldview that they're trying to pump out into the world now. Because if you listen to the world, they want you, they're, going to, they're trying to get you to think in a new way, in a different way, because they want you to believe that your thinking is old-fashioned and out of date. And you can hear and they'll tell you the Bible is out of date. And Brother Randy Smith was saying that, somebody told him that, the Bible is out of date. Uh, and a thought just popped in my head. I said, why didn't you ask him, when did it go out of date? <laughs> when? When did it go out of date? And later on, he did ask somebody that. And they just sat there, I don't know. <laughs> That's right. They don't know. You know why? Because it's not. <laughs> Amen. Never has, never will. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if my thinking is right, my thinking is going to take me by the Spirit of God to a place called heaven one day. And I don't know about you, but I've been walking this for 30 some years and hey amen, and it's been good for me. The Word of God, the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, God the Father, hey amen, they ain't ever let me down. And the Word has always guided me the right way. It may have seemed that I didn't know what I was doing sometimes, but it keep on walking. Keep on traveling for the Lord. And you come out victorious. Amen. Amen. Somewhere down the line, you're going to come out victorious. Right? Now, I, I want to share with you uh, something about God that's even uh, one of the greatnesses of God. I mean, he's great already. Uh, in this thought pattern and it just kind of come to me while I was reading and the Lord showed it to me and opened it up and I never hadn't thought of it like this before uh, so I want to share that with you amen in, uh, in Isaiah there I read to you that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and all this right okay so God God thinks right he has thoughts of us so what is his thoughts let me turn back here I'll get another scripture Amen. In Jeremiah 29, 11, now he was talking to the children of Israel, all right? But God is no respecter of person. And if he thinks this way toward the one that he called at one time his wife, right? 
how much more would he think about those who he calls his sons and daughters, which are you and me, right? I mean, right? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you think? Here's what he said. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, talking to Israel, saith the Lord. And man, he had thoughts toward Israel. And here, here's his thoughts. He said, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Amen, Israel. He said, I've got thoughts of peace towards you to give you an expected end. I don't have thoughts of evil towards you. I've got thoughts of peace. And how much more are his sons and daughters? You think he has thoughts of peace towards you? Well, sure he does, amen. Don't we all have thoughts of peace toward our children? We, we don't have thoughts of evil toward them. I mean, if somebody's in the right mind, they don't. There's some parents that, yeah, they do evil toward their children, unfortunately, just here recently. But I want to see my child prosper. I, I, I've got thoughts of good toward her because I love her. And you all do too. You're not sitting around trying to scheme some way to, when they get older, to rob them of their money. Or I took care of them all my life. Now they're going to take care of me somehow. I'll get them. <laughs> no. Right? You have thoughts of peace toward them. And to think that God has that toward us also. Thoughts of peace. He wants to do us good. I mean, he knows he has the power to do that. Amen. He has the authority to do that. Amen. Amen. And he has the want to to do that. Amen. He wants to bless us. Amen. Now, I'm sure as a child growing up, when, when we had the belt or the switch took to us, we didn't think that our parents had the best thoughts toward us. <laughs> It didn't feel like it anyhow, did it? But since we, most of us here are older, <laughs> we understand that was love. That was love. God corrects Israel over and over and over. He corrects us over and over and over. And he, he does it in his way because he's God. He knows how to do it the right way. See, he, he knew, he couldn't, in the days of Noah, God couldn't let the world continue like it was. I mean, with every evil imagination of the heart, they, he couldn't let them. So he had to do the best thing for mankind. And that was to take the only righteous family they was, preserve them, amen, and kill off the rest and start over, amen, so that they have a chance, mankind would have a chance. God knew in his righteousness that was the only way to go. And we know he, he allows people to destroy nations and all this, but God knows what he's doing. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Amen. So we got to trust him. We got to trust him. Amen. Go with me one more verse to the book of Psalms. David writes something here and it's, that got me thinking on this. Thinking, yeah, that's funny. Okay. Thoughts going on this. So, amen. Um. As you turn in there, it's chapter 39. I'll give you the verse in a minute. I want to read you something Charles Spurgeon wrote about this verse. We're getting ready to read. He is not alarmed at the fact that God knows all about him. I'm talking about David. King David's not alarmed. God knows everything about him. On the contrary, he is comforted and even feels himself enriched as with a casket of precious jewels 
that God should think upon him is the believer's treasure and, ple and pleasure. That God should take a thought of me. Who am I that God, creator of heaven and earth, should take any thought of me? A little country boy that the world could care spit about. But God takes thought of me. And he takes thought of you. I take comfort in that. It, it doesn't destroy me to know that God knows everything about me. I've got nothing to hide from God. I've got faults, I've got failures, but he already knows them. And guess what? He loves me anyhow. Amen. He loves me. Now see, here, here I'm going to read to you. Here's the powerful thing about God that a lot of people don't really comprehend. It's, it's going to be hard for you to understand, comprehend. It's hard for me to comprehend this. But he's God. He's God. Okay? All right, verse 17. Can I get a drink? One thirty nine. One thirty nine. You're way in the back there. One hundred and thirty nine. Verse seventeen says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. Now David's saying, how precious is the thoughts of God to me. He's talking personally. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sands. When I awake, I am still with thee. <laughs> David's, you know how many, can you count the sand of the sea? You can't. You and I could not. It's infinite number. It's, it's a number you can't add up. And David is saying the thoughts that God has toward him in his lifetime are more than the sands of the sea. You know anybody that thinks of you that much? You think I sit around and think about Brother Dave that much? I love him. I think about him sometimes. I mean, even our children. I don't sit around and think about my daughter that much. Sometimes, yes. Often, more than any other people. My wife, yeah, because she's always talking to me. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. <laughs> so, she's captures my thought many times. But, I mean, here, I mean, just, just think about that. And David is saying that, and God is thinking, and God is no respecter person, and if God thinks that much on David continually, he'd have to be continually thinking on David. All the time, God's mind and thoughts is on David. And he's on yours also. <laughs> now here's what blows your mind. See, cause me, I can just think one thought at a time. And you probably never thought about this. I think one thought at a time. I can't think two thoughts at the same time. Can anybody hear? I can't think three thoughts at the same time. Or four thoughts at the same time. I'm not God. But see, God can think, get this, this is who God is. God can think according to this because he thinks of David, he thinks of me, he thinks of you, 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 and, and billions of other people at the same time, all the time. Hey Amen. That just blows my mind. That's it. And I, I, can't, I, I can't comprehend it hardly. Amen, because he's God. He can do that. I mean, I do well to think one thought at a time. Let alone think all these thoughts at the same time and comprehend every one of them just as clear as the day outside. And do it continually. That's who God is. 
That's who he is. And he loves us enough to continue to think about us as he did King David continually. Amen. And not only is he starting, his thoughts are on us continually, but I read to you in Isaiah, amen, where his thoughts on us continually is for our good and peace and joy and love, amen. amen. And to lead us and guide us. Amen. The most powerful being ever was or ever will be, thoughts is on you continually, amen. Glory to his name, praise God. Yeah. <laughs> While I'm sleeping, he's still thinking about me. I'm dreaming away and he's still thinking about me. Matter of fact, according to this, he never stops thinking about me. Never. Always thinking about me. Me personally. <laughs> and you personally. He can do that. Because why? He's also omnipresent. He can be everywhere at the same time. And if he can be everywhere at the same time, guess what? He can think about everybody at the same time. <laughs> I mean, it's the only way it can happen. If, you're, if somebody thinks about you, a man, your thoughts are on you as the sands of the sea, and he, he was, thoughts wasn't just on King David and his life. His thoughts was on other people also. Amen. He ain't just focusing on me. He's focusing on everybody at the same time. Amen. Because he's God. So I hope this gives you comfort. You're never alone. And I know people, they probably feel like, you know, nobody, if I was to die, nobody would ever, even really, nobody ever could take a thought of it. Nobody cares about me. I hear people commit suicide and they leave these notes and nobody cared about them. They're wrong. If they would realize and believe that there is a God in heaven, he thinks on them and he cares for them. And his thoughts is not evil toward them. God, the Bible says God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. No pleasure. Amen. He's always watching. He's always caring. Amen. Because he loves us. Amen. Amen. I can't, I take joy in this. I really do take pleasure. I hope I can retain this in my mind, my heart, as I walk the rest of the days of my life. I hope I can, I can understand that, what God has brought out tonight. Amen. I really do. There's some, some things like that that I just hope I, I catch that and, and keep it close to me all the days of my life because it helps me. It helps me. Amen. To know that he's with me. And he's thinking. Somebody's thinking about me all the time. And that somebody's God. Diane, would you come pin it, please? Amen. All right, Trey, you're getting louder than we are. A little back there, buddy. So, Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yes, you are. Amen. But see, God sees every step of that persecution. And he's with us every moment. Yeah. Yeah. The one, only one, maybe, I don't know for sure, that he may have looked away when Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? They may be, he was God, but there may have been a moment. And that was probably be the only person. Amen. But 
All the rest. And he did it for us. We never have to be forsaken. Yeah. Right. And, and we want to defend God sometime. And he, say, he tells us, no, you stand. I can, I can take care of myself. I can take care of myself. Amen. Because there's a lot of wickedness going on. Uh, we want to run out and destroy it all <laughs> sometimes. It's what we feel like sometimes. I just want to defend it. I want to defend these precious little children being aborted. You know? I know. So it is. No. No. And that's where God's wisdom and ways are much higher than our ways. He is merciful, long suffering. But He also knows when it comes to a place. Just like he did in the days of Noah, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's enough. That's it. This is it. No more. No more. It's time. And that happens in nations. And we know that because the Word of God says nations that forget God will be turned into hell. And it happens in people's lives also. Individuals. And it's a scary thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Amen. But we keep praying. We keep living. We keep walking. And God orders the steps of a good man Amen. or a woman. He orders them. Why? Because he's constantly, constantly with us. <laughs> Praise God. Constantly. And his thoughts are pouring out upon us. That's why the devil standing before him said, have you considered my servant Job? Job never left God's thoughts. Never. In all the struggle he went through, God always had him in his thoughts. Every bit of it. Hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Gamalia. Gamalia. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, you won't stop it. Amen. That's right. Amen. No, nope. stay still going. Amen. That's it. That's all we know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what he says is right. Amen. It is. Yeah. Because the word is against. Yeah. That's why I'm against things. Why I'm for things. I'm for what Jesus said is holy and righteous. And what is good. I'm against Amen. Corrupt. Yes. So that's where I stand. Amen. I can't change my stance because of what the politicians say. No. My stance stays the same regardless of who's in office. What they try to do to me, what they try to say to me. My stand is with Jesus Christ. That's it. Because we believe our stand is true. It's true. I believe it's true. Those who can, would you stand with us? Can you come pray? Come on. Come on. Come on. Take comfort, though. Take comfort that in your life, God's thoughts towards you is more than the sands of the sea. More than sands of the sea. 
eight years old, God was with me because a truck full of wood ran over top of my belly. <laughs> and I didn't even get a scratch out of it. I should have died, but God was with me. He, he never turned his eyes away in that moment. It didn't surprise him. He was right there. In every moment of your life, God has been right there. Right there. Anybody else see? Come pray. Come on. He's been right there. And when we close our eyes on this side for the last time, his thoughts will still be with us and he'll be right there with us in every bit of it. Every moment, every second. His thoughts is on us. Amen. Hmm. What a joy. <laughs> See, it's just hard to understand that somebody's that powerful. <laughs> According to word, he is that powerful. And you know, the world will tell you, oh, they ain't nobody ever like that. They ain't nobody like that. Huh. See, I won't believe what the word says, not what people think. It's impossible. Yeah, and man, in our cardinal mind, we would think that's impossible. Nobody could ever do that. No. Nobody couldn't. Except God. Don't give the devil that kind of power either because he don't have it he's, he's not omnipresent he's not everywhere at once he's not God there's only one God amen all knowing all seeing all powerful that's God amen all right all right appreciate y'all coming out tonight hopefully the Lord has spoke to you amen we do we do our best to Try to share the gospel. I mean, I don't care. I like Wednesday nights. Amen. Now, I pray you all keep coming, and we'll keep having church. Uh, too many has faded away on Wednesday nights. Too many. And that's even leaders of this church, sadly to say. Amen. But they're in the hands of God. So we'll keep carrying on, right? We'll keep carrying on best we can. So you pray for us, and uh, we look for a great time Sunday morning uh, and uh, see what the Lord will do, right?